Welcome back everybody, today we're continuing on our inventory system. So in the last episode we got some basic UI set up and in this episode we're actually going to add some a little bit more functionality. So the first thing we want to do is create a few functions. So we want to create a public void add and this is, gonna, this is not going to take anything uh, as of yet. And then we want to create a public void remove. And this is also not going to take anything as of yet. Uh, let's do remove. There we go. And these are pretty self-explanatory as to what they're going to do. Obviously add and remove stuff. This should add it to the next available slot. And this should find the object we're trying to remove and remove it. Or possibly subtract one from it is another way to think of it uh, if there's more if we're carrying more than one tile before we continue going on with that i want to create our item class uh, script so what our item class is is basically very similar to our tile class except it is a uh, specific for items i guess so let's create a new c sharp script and i'm going to call this item class open that up Cool, and then we just want to get rid of mono behavior here as well because this isn't going to actually derive from anything. This is just going to be existing essentially. Um, but what this does need is a public enum. Now, what this enum is going to determine is whether it's a block or an item. Now, it can only really have two options, so we could use a bool for this. However, I'm going to use an enum because it's something that you guys should learn. It is quite cool. Um, so let's do it. And this enum is going to determine something. So let's say public enum, public enum item type. And the way we set this up is within these curly brackets here. So it's either going to be a block or tool, correct? Just like that. And then this also needs a semicolon at the end. So now we can say a public item type, item type. And this item type can only have a value of either block or tool now. So if you were to see this in the inspector, it'd look like a drop down menu. So that's kind of a nice way to think about it. Um, however, we also need another enum, which is going to say tool type. And this can either be axe, pickaxe, or hammer. This, you would also add a sword here, but since I'm doing combat in a different series slash episode, I'm not going to worry about that. This is specifically for an inventory system and a specific inventory system for our 2D sandbox game. However, if you did want to apply this, like I said in the first episode, you will be able to manufacture this a little bit. And if you need help doing that, again, join the Discord, but you will be able to use this other places if you intended to as well. Uh, it just might take a little bit more work, but... I'm sure you guys will figure that one out. And like I said, the server is there to help you guys do that anyway. So anyway, moving on, let's create a public tool type, tool type as well. And then this should also take in a block class. So pub public tile class tile. And of, of course this is optional because it could also be a uh, tool as well. So we will, uh, we will have to create a uh, tile tool class option as well, which doesn't currently exist, but we shall make very soon. In fact, shall we make that now? Yes, let's make that now. That will be a little bit of fun. So what this is, it's a block class, a tile class rather, and a tool class. They, they're going to sit under this umbrella of an item class, uh, theoretically speaking. So let's create this tool class script here open that up we're getting a lot of scripts now which is good it means we know what we're doing slightly <laughs> and then let's change this to script hey uh scriptable object create asset menu here file name equals tool class with no spaces and then menu name is going to equal tool space class just like that and this is going to take in a public string name and then a public string, uh, sorry, a public sprite uh, and we'll just call it sprite actually. 
And then as well, I just want to get rid of this line here. And now in item, I want a method to create a new item. So public item class it should be a better way. And this should take in, sorry, let me do this as well. Public item class. Sorry, I can't think today. Public tool class tool. There we go. And item class, when we create it, should take in the tile class. And I'll just call this underscore tile. And then I'll take in a tool class as well, which is underscore tool. Yep. So this is our constructor. Remember, this is what's going to help us create this uh, thing here. In fact, seeing as we can have more than one constructor, we can actually have a separate constructor for tile classes and a separate constructor for tool classes, which is a better way of doing it. In fact, um, anyway, let's create a public string here and we're going to call this name a public sprite sprite and then a public uh, public bool is stack a bool. There we go. So now name is going to equal tile underscore tile dot name. Sprite is going to equal underscore tile dot tile sprites. And then we're going to take the first instance and then is stackable is going to equal underscore tile dot is stackable. Cool. So that's our constructor for taking in a tile class done. Now we have to create another one public item class. Uh, and this should be one that takes in a tool class. And we'll call this underscore tool. And here we're going to say name equals underscore tool dot name. And then sprite equals underscore tool dot sprite. And since tools are not going to be stackable either way, we can just say is stackable. Is stackable equals false, just like that. Uh, if you did want tools to be stackable for whatever reason, you would just create another bool inside here called is stackable and just pass that on, etc. Uh, it's quite simple, uh, but yeah. So this is going to give us a complaint saying we don't use it and whatnot. That's fine. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. In our inventory script here, this is going to take in a item class, item. And remove is also going to take in an item class, item. So now let's set up a couple of um, items and tools, etc. So let's create a new folder in our asset menu to so create folder. And I'm going to call this tools inside this folder here. I'm going to create a new tool class. You'll see it pop up right there. And I'm going to call this stone underscore pickaxe. Maybe. Yeah. Name here should be stone pickaxe. And then the sprite, I'm going to give it just a picture of a pickaxe, which is right there. Very nice, nice and handy. And now, very simply, after we do void start, I can just say, I'm going to add a tool class. So what I should actually do is at the start here, I'll take in a, just to test this initially, I'm going to take in a public tool class uh, and we'll just call this tool for now. And then I'll say item add new item class. And this will take in either a tile class or if I press tab, you can you can see it switches from item class to tool class, which is quite handy. So it's actually going to take in an item class tool. And just like that. That should work. There we go. So then it will add it to our inventory. Of course, this doesn't actually do anything just yet. We're going to code that either now or in the next episode, depending on the time. Uh, so stone pickaxe has been set up. Let's go to our player object. You'll see that we have an option to drag and drop the stone pickaxe there now. I shall do that. And now we're going to 
a loop in our add function. We're going to loop through each slot and then add it to the next available slot and then update our inventory. So the way we're going to loop, if I do this loop, what will happen is that it will loop start at the bottom left corner, go all the, go up to the bottom top corner, sorry, to the top left corner. And then once it starts in that column, it'll do the next column. So it'll keep going vertically. We want this to actually go horizontally so it fills up the X axis first and then the Y axis, if that makes sense. Um, that's super easy to fix, uh, to change. What I'm gonna do is just cut that bit from there, paste it at the start, go to the bottom uh, curly bracket and then delete it and draw it again. And then it should update automatically. And the other thing is as well, we want it to fill, fill from the top to the bottom. So int y should actually equal inventory height minus one. And it's gonna keep looping on while y is greater than zero, essentially. And it will do that as well when y is equal to zero. And then I'm just gonna say y minus minus. There we go. So now we just have to check if it's empty. So if this slot is empty. And the way we check that, is simply by saying if inventory slots x, y is not equal, sorry, at the square bracket, that's important, is not equal to null, it means there's a, uh, it means there's an item or something there currently. So if we just do is equal to null, that means there is nothing there, which means this slot is empty, which is nice and handy. It means we can add it there. So all we have to do then is just say inventory slots x, y is equal to item class. We also have to modify this. So this should take in a public rather than tile class now, this should take in an item class and it should take in an item class item just like that. And then this is going to equal, sorry, this dot item is going to equal item class. There we go. Is that right? No, sorry, item. And I think that is correct. Inventory slots, x, y, the item. Let's go check this, is it, if this is null. Um, so this will actually give us a null reference, uh, thinking about it now, because we're saying setting the item, um, what we should actually do is create a new version of it. So inventory this equals new inventory slot because it's currently empty. So we can just overwrite the existing one there. Uh, and new inventory slots. And now we can just create it here inside these curly brackets here. So item equals item position equals new vector two int x y and then quantity equals quantity uh quantity equals can i just say quantity plus equals one uh, no, because it has not been declared. That actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, for now, we'll just say quantity equals one. Because we are setting it from nothing to something. So that makes sense. Um, except we now have a issue here. So all we have to do is just say item. And obviously dot tile sprites may not exist. So all we have to do is just say item dot sprite because that is definitely going to exist. Ah, okay, and now with all that done, I can just say update inventory UI at the end, and now that should work okay. Now theoretically, what should happen is once I open my inventory, I should see a stone pickaxe in the top left corner. We have a pickaxe in every slot. Uh, right, yes, Um. so if it's equal to null, we should place it there and then break from the loop as well um, because uh, we should in fact do this. If, sorry, bull has been added, we'll say, 
Bool added, in fact. Bool added equals false at the start. Nice and easy. And then I'm just going to say added equals true. And then while we're looping through each of these, first thing I'm going to do is break here. And then here I can just say added if added then break again. So what that means is that it will break from this loop, but it won't actually break from the bigger loop and it will keep looping. So we're just gonna say, if it's been added, then break. And obviously if it hasn't been added, then that means there's no, not enough slots in the inventory anyway. So now when we open up our inventory, you can see that we only have a pickaxe in the first slot. Let me make this larger for you guys. There we go. Nice and easy, we have a pickaxe in the first slot, except we currently can't select it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so now we have the add function working. We're getting somewhere. Um, thanks for watching this one, guys. In the next one, we're going to keep going on our inventory system. Uh, I kind of want these episodes to be short and sweet, nice and straightforward to the point, helping you guys get something working. Uh, hopefully it makes sense. If it doesn't, uh, uh leave a like, comment regardless. <laughs> I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching and take care, everyone.